Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, the cool version. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Kingsman, the Secret Service. What do you see? I see potential. Kingsman is an international intelligence agency operating at the highest level of discretion. If you're prepared to adapt, you can transform. Into a spy. Interested? Oh, yes. You are about to embark on the most dangerous job interview in the world. We're here to test you to the limit. To enhance your skills. Train for the evil out there. In June 2014, 20th Century Fox hired Mark Miller as a consultant to help them oversee their Marvel properties, which also gave the one-man comic book factory an in at the Hollywood studio. While Miller's Wanted was distributed by Universal and the kick-ass films by Lionsgate, his most recent comics, published under his Miller World banner, are all set up at Fox. Nemesis, Superior, Starlight, and The Secret Service. And while Miller is known for partnering up with the best artists in the business, he managed to land Watchmen's Dave Gibbons for The Secret Service, who has a co-creator credit on the comic. Can Miller evolve into a comic book brand name that makes a transition to mainstream film, a la Frank Miller? Miller, a writer and an artist, is particularly well known for his visual style, while Miller will have to craft his legacy based on his ideas, which tend to take popular old-fashioned ideas, here the spy genre, and then put a cynical modern-day twist on them, plus a heavy dose of violence and swearing sprinkled with pop culture references. Yet Kingsman The Secret Service doesn't seem so cynical. In fact, it seems like a valentine not just to the spy genre, but the UK. A popular trend as of late with Harry Potter, The New Bond, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, and even Paddington. Once again, Miller is putting his work in the hands of multi-hyphenate Matthew Vaughn and writer Jane Goldman, and surely this team hopes to do even better than their first outing, Kick-Ass. Vaughn and Goldman did such a good job with Kick-Ass, they landed X-Men First Class. Yet after the prequel, Brian Singer wanted his toys back. Speaking of toys, longtime action figure Mark Hamill has a fun cameo here. Front and center is Oscar winner Colin Firth in his first action movie, perhaps pulling a Liam Neeson, while UK television actor Taron Egerton makes his feature film debut. Michael Caine and Jack Davenport add some more distinguished British flavor, while Samuel L. Jackson brings both American appeal and some diversity to the flick. The only potential red flag is that Kingsman The Secret Service was supposed to open in October, but now this UK Valentine will debut on Valentine's Day. Will audiences fall in love? Oh, I have fallen deeply in love with Kingsman The Secret Service. So much so that even though I got to see the movie for free at a press screening, I've already bought my ticket to see it again opening weekend. Matthew Vaughn and Mark Miller have 100% built on the foundation they originally laid with Kick-Ass. But while Kick-Ass was a series of highs and lows creatively, Kingsman The Secret Service is just one continuous high from beginning to end. It's the Big Daddy Hit Girl movie we always hoped for, but instead got Kick-Ass 2. But while I loved the movie, a number of you tweeted me, and I had this conversation with a few people in person as well, that you didn't love the movie, and in fact you found it weird. And it is weird! Sometimes it's even too weird. And it's difficult for me to explain exactly what I mean by that without giving away spoilers, so I hope you'll check out my spoiler review for the film where we can discuss it openly. But here, without spoilers, this is how I'd break it down. The first half of the movie is as good as the best Bond movies. Seriously, if I was part of the current Bond team, I would take a very hard look at Kingsman The Secret Service. But then the second half, while still incredibly awesome, uh, it takes on these really strong political positions, but then also the violence takes on a real-world personal quality, which is off-putting. I admit, it's off-putting. I found it off-putting. But the difference is, is that I loved the movie so much, I was willing to let it slide. And that's where I think moviegoers are going to be divided. Do you love Kingsman the Secret Service enough to let that stuff go, or does it just trip you up too much? And I haven't even decided, by the way, if those elements are necessary for the film. Uh, because I think you could argue not to include them would be kind of selling out. Because the movie definitely has an agenda. It has a political agenda, but it also has an agenda in terms of how movies are made today. Not just action movies and comic book movies, but particularly spy movies. And I think what it has to say is really positive. 
Uh, so I think it would be unfortunate to lose those elements, and I'm not sure if you could retain them without these off-putting elements. But I do know on the flip side that by including these things, there's a very strong chance it will keep Kings from the Secret Service from becoming the global blockbuster that I think it deserves to be, and potentially even keep it from becoming a franchise, which would be tragic. But, you know, uh, Matthew Vaughn and Mark Miller rolled the dice, the message was that important to them, and we'll see where the chips fall. But again, I loved it. And let's discuss specifically what I loved. Thematically, I loved uh, how it deals with uh, aspirational qualities. I think that so often today, Hollywood uh, has been highlighting self-acceptance. It's a, a real self-acceptance kick with movies like Frozen, Maleficent, Guardians of the Galaxy, etc. And I think that self-acceptance is great and very important, but it's also important to balance self-acceptance out with self-improvement. And that's something that Kingsman the Secret Service does beautifully. Also, the action sequences are spectacular. Not, they're not only incredibly well executed, but they're done in a truly unique and inventive manner. I also thought the costume and production design was astounding, with a, with a level of attention to detail usually reserved for Baz Luhrmann movies. Now, as far as the cast goes, it's perfect head to toe. Every role is perfectly cast. But the standouts are Taron Edgerton, our young lead. Uh, he's a new actor to Hollywood. I think he's going to be a really big star. Uh, Brian Singer passed him up, actually, for the role of Cyclops in the new uh, X-Men movie, X-Men Apocalypse. I think that he's going to discover that was a mistake. Uh, Sam, Samuel L. Jackson's quite good as this uh, very bizarre villain, but I think the choices he makes, while bold uh, and a little bizarre again, work. But then by far and away, the real revelation here is Colin Firth. Who would have ever guessed that Colin Firth would be such a wonderful action star? Uh, he does as good a job with his action sequences as Keanu Reeves does in movies like The Matrix and John Wick. And the reason I make the Keanu Reeves comparison is because I actually just watched John Wick the other day, and I, I marveled at how Keanu Reeves was so precise with his action choreography. A lot of times actors just get close enough, and then they get to cheat with camera angles and quick cuts. But not not, he, not Keanu Reeves and not Colin Firth. And I think that for Keanu Reeves, that's actually his best asset as an actor. But Colin Firth, just imagine how powerful he could be as a, a movie star at this level, considering the fact he's not only a great actor-actor, but he's so good at these action sequences. He was just amazing. And kudos to Mark Miller, Matthew Vaughn, and Colin Firth for creating this type of action hero, which we've never seen before and is so beautifully realized. Now, speaking of Matthew Vaughn, uh, someone else uh, tweeted me that they thought Matthew Vaughn had a really distinct visual style, something that occurred to them while watching this movie. It opened in the UK early. And while I didn't see that with X-Men First Class, I didn't think that had a really distinct personality behind the camera. I think you can definitely say it of Kick-Ass, and I think that with this movie, yes, I agree. Matthew Vaughn solidifies himself as someone with a unique and distinct uh, really strong creative voice. Uh, and I think that's going to make him a very strong resource for Hollywood. I think there are even bigger things on the horizon for Matthew Vaughn uh, after Kingsman the Secret Service, uh, you know, hits the pop culture consciousness. So I really think you should see this movie. Yes, you probably will find some things distasteful. And yes, there's a slim chance, or maybe even a little bit more of a slim chance, you won't be able to get over it. But I don't think you should keep let that keep you from experiencing how many things this movie just gets right that I think everyone can universally agree on for those for those elements. So that's my review of Kingsman the Secret Service. I'm very excited to discuss it with you in the comments down below because of all these really interesting things going on here with the movie. And you can also check out some other episodes right now.